giant new retro mural at the corner of West Gordon Street and American Parkway will now greet visitors to Allentown. And it'll be impossible to miss. WFMZ's Bo now is live there right now. Bo. Rob, to get an idea of just how big this greeting is, you have to stand underneath the letters, 40 feet high, 170 feet long. To put that into context, the Hollywood sign in California, it's only 10 feet higher than this. In fact, you'd be hard-pressed to find another name of a city mural that's larger than this one. And developer Nat Hyman said he did it to highlight what's good about the city. What's in a name for this giant old postcard-style mural? It's the essence of Allentown, according to developer Nat Hyman. I wanted to highlight our kids, so I used the two public high schools. Obviously, our sports teams, we're big into our sports here in Allentown, and our civil servants, who I don't think often get a lot of credit that they deserve. And a cracked Liberty Bell highlights the city's Revolutionary War past, as does the building itself. Built in 1776, it housed British soldiers captured during the Battle of Trenton. And Hyman based the design of the sign after a similar one in Chicago. He commissioned Baltimore artist Edward Williams to paint the 7,000 square foot greeting. It's funny, sometimes when you see it, like the letters from a distance, you don't think it's too big, but then when somebody walks up to it, all of a sudden the scale comes into focus and you realize those letters are large. At night, using a high resolution projector, Williams sketches one letter at a time, then paints it during the day. Not an easy task on a canvas nearly 250 years old. There's old, old parts of structures that were attached at one point, bolts sticking out in odd places, and the windows are all different levels. So laying it out is, is always a challenge, trying to get a straight line. For Hyman, it's a straight answer to the question of why. It brings a smile to some people's face, that they look at something that's positive in Allentown, that they don't forget the good. And it took Williams just about 10 days to complete it. And this area in front of me here, this gravel, this will soon become a park. And Hyman invites people to come on down, have a picnic, and be greeted. Live here in Allentown, because it says so right there. Bo Colt now, 69 News. Hi. <laughs> First off, happy Valentine's Day. Second, I'm going to try and make this video shorter, so we're moving on. Where's the pause button? Okay, so we're still talking about understanding art worlds. So the domain and the communities in the art worlds. The domain is the art world, so the field of artists. And then the communities are the people and how they interact and experience the art. So we just saw this video uh, talking about the new mural that was painted in Allentown. I pass this every time I'm on my way to RCCS, which I would see it more if we were in person. But um, so the main question I want you to ask yourself is, what is your relationship with art communities? And this is a video we watched today. That one's here if you're interested. So in the Ed Puzzle, we talked about concepts, ideas, and problems in art. First off, uh, what is a concept and why is this banana here? So uh, something you should consider when looking at conceptual art is, is it following a traditional aesthetic, this banana? No. Uh, technical abilities, are they shown? Um, knowing how to use duct tape is a technical ability, but there are not many technical abilities shown. And was there a concern for materials? That's kind of, because the materials, while it is a banana, they were considered, it might not be as much of a concern that the materials are expensive and fancy and will create beautiful works of art, but that's not the intention. Uh, the intention is to make a joke of uh, global trade by taping a banana to the wall, selling it for $120,000, and then selling it to somebody who just ends up eating it. They're trying to make a comment on society. So that's what artists do. <laughs> uh, they also explore different ideas. So your, the ideas that they explore are 
basically their interests, what they prefer to learn about, they kind of emanate in their art. Whether it's something that's artistic, like, I really like this marker, I'm going to see what it does. Or if you're thinking about an idea of, like, psychology and how people's perceptions are skewed by all different things, that's an idea. Um, some problems in art, there are all different kinds of problems. But one is just figuring out the construction of your artwork. How are you going to make it look the way you want it to? Or how are you going to get the banana to stick to the wall? Another question that was asked during the, ed, the previous Ed Puzzle was um, that understanding art worlds is important because of the interactions art can, because of interactions art will Sorry. Understanding art worlds is important because the interactions with art can breed inspiration and creativity. Do you agree that this concept could be applied to other disciplines such as science, math, language arts, etc.? Explain why. Um, Por qué? Well, there are many reasons, as you can see. This is one of the um, most, I would say, inspiring examples that I was given from a student. Um, this person said... Scientific discoveries are made drawing from other scientific discoveries that have already been made. It would be impossible to discover anything new if we did not utilize the information that others have already discovered. If we didn't use past discoveries, we would only be rediscovering the basics over and over and over again. So she used the example of math. Um, no new mathematical equations have ever would ever exist if people didn't accept first that 1 plus 1 equals 2, and so forth. So we need to be willing to accept and make use of the creations and discoveries of others in order to move forward and make something that has value. That's what artists try to do, and that's what people in all disciplines try to do. Make something of value. So how do artists understand art worlds? I use this on Procreate and I wrote stuff. So you can, artists can look at the community and collaborate with the club, with the community. They can ha look at history and other cultures, how they've made art throughout time and history. Um, they can, you can interact with um, artists and learn about art. You can also go to artist talks. Artists tend to do a lot of art artist talks, especially when they have galleries or exhibitions. Um, a new thing is the virtual environment. You can attend artist talks and gallery exhibitions and virtual museums online from the comfort of your home. So that's a new avenue that people have access to art. A great example of understanding art worlds, an artist example, is uh, this group, uh, John Ahern and Rigoberto Torres. They are both artists that work with the community. So not only do they collaborate as a team of artists, but they also collaborate with the community and incorporate them into the artwork. Um, so not only do, do these two have artwork in galleries, but they have murals outside and accessible to anybody that's walking by. No gatekeepers outside. So that's super cool. I wanted to show you an example of what you can do with the artist connection. So this is a student example that uh, was handed in early and thank you to that person, but they wrote about Jane Rosenberg and that is a courtroom sketch artist. So this person connected their personal interests of criminal justice and uh, incorporated it into this class. There's always something that you can connect to art, I swear. So he wrote a little bit of information about that artist and then went on to connect this artist to not only understanding art worlds, but express, envision, observe, uh, this person went beyond understanding art worlds because all of the studio habits go with each other. They bounce off each other. You can have one and another together. 
you can have multiple, you can have a couple. It is very plastic. So try to write between um, one and two paragraphs. As long as you can express to me what the connection is and a little information about the artist, that is all you need to do. For the people who are presenting their artists, you will put your artwork on Google Site Portfolio. Um, everybody's going to do that for their own personal one, but yours is going to go on the community Google Site Portfolio. Um, and I will show you how to do that in a minute. Before I do that, I wanted to show that there is extra text that you can read. I have examples with notes that I took on it and um, examples that just have the plain text that's highlighted a little. Um, and you can look through this presentation under the Edpuzzle assignment in Google Classroom. All right, so this is the community website. Each grade has one. Each person in this class will contribute to this. I'm going to add editing access so that you can put your artist on this slot, on this website. So you're really not doing extra work. You're just doing, you're just putting your work in a different place um, besides your, what, your personal Google site portfolio. You're putting it here too. Everybody's doing the artist, but you're putting it here and then you're also going to be talking during class and leading the discussion with two or three other people. Oh, the pizza's here. <laughs> Look at that deliciousness. So this last thing I wanted to show you was the explanation for the collaborative art community. So each person's going to present at least once during this marking period and the next. And you're gonna be in groups of two or three, maybe four, depending on when. And there's gonna be a list already that says exactly when you're gonna go. So hopefully we can stick to that list. But if you were chosen, please come to my office hours because I will help you through every step, I swear. And if you don't understand what we're talking about, please come to my office hours. Of course, do the work and then things will get easier for you. But if you're not getting it, please let me know. So here is the rubric. And you can find that this whole thing in English and Spanish on uh, our Google Classroom underneath of Collaborative Art Community. And the Artist Connection explains what you're supposed to do if you're not presenting. So go ahead and look through that and let me know if you have questions.